Hello and welcome back to this video series on how to make a Pac-Man game in Scratch 3. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to add an enemy that Pac-Man can touch and that will temporarily slow Pac-Man down. So let's get started by creating a new sprite for our enemy. So we're going to paint a new sprite and we just need to draw a ghost. So for this I'm going to work in bitmap mode, it's just slightly easier and I need to choose a colour for my ghost so I might choose a kind of uh, sort of dark blue colour and I'm going to start off by drawing a, a circle that's sort of the top of the head and I'm going to get a bit of a square shape let me just zoom in a bit I'm going to get my rectangle tool and I'm going to stretch that out a little bit so it creates like the body of the ghost let's add some eyes so I'm going to grab the circle tool again I'm going to go to uh, white I'm going to do another one of those placing them quite close together gives a bit of a cartoon effect and let's uh, put some black, let's give it uh, black pupils. And finally, let's just use the eraser tool just to cut out, might make it a bit smaller, just to cut out a kind of a feet for it. Oh, before I do that, actually, I'm going to duplicate this costume so that I can have two different sort of uh, feet shapes. Not the best effort in the world, but let's try another one now. And the idea is that now they can move between the two states and it will give a little bit of animation as um, the ghost moves along. So that's all you need to do in order to actually draw your ghost. We're just gonna add a little bit of code to this now. First off, we want to name our ghost sprite. So this is gonna be the slowdown ghost. So call it slowdown ghost. And we're going to add some code to this to say, um, when the game begins or in fact we can even do a when I receive now we want this to appear uh, you know when the when the dots appear and everything else appears so should the ghost so we'll do when um, uh, when the dots are shown um, we want the ghost to appear so we're going to want looks and show and we're going to want to set up a little loop uh, that runs forever changing between those two different costume states so we can just get uh, looks next costume and a wait from control, wait for uh, 0.2 seconds. And if I click and test that, there you go, you get that little animation going on. Okay, uh, now obviously our ghost is pretty big, so let's make it a bit smaller in the sprite info area. Let's try 20%, maybe a bit small, 30%, no, maybe 20 was better. I mean, it'll depend entirely in your game on uh, how much space you've got but of course when you go full screen it's a little bit more obvious so maybe that's fine. We now need to add some code to make it actually move around our maze and for that we're going to use some glides. So let's um, add a, another when I receive show dots and we're going to want to set up uh, another forever loop that sets up a repeated pattern of movement for this uh, ghost. So we're going to start off by giving it a place to, um, to begin. So choose your location where you want your ghost to appear, maybe down here, for example. And just make sure that you then grab a go to from motion. So when I receive uh, show dots, go to that initial location, and then we're going to set up our little um, movements from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glide from here to here. So if you just click and drag and move your little ghost, and now you can grab the from motion glide one second two and it will have now picked that new location you've just moved to one second is awfully quick let's try four seconds and now let's move up here and let's now glide to there and one second probably is about right for that let's move him back and another glide and now let's go back to over here and another glide and this time we can go back to four seconds again Notice every time you want to move him somewhere, so up here perhaps, then you choose another glide, and that was a bit of a shorter one, so maybe that'll be just two seconds. Uh, or no, that could be probably one second. And then I'm gonna to want to bring him along here, so that might be another one second. And then I want to take him up here, and that was a bit further, so maybe that one is a two seconds. Then I want to take him over here, and that one perhaps is more like three seconds. Then I'll take him down here, which is two seconds again, probably. Then I'll take him over here, which maybe is just one. 
and then I've got to go back again and you've got to kind of undo the circuit you've taken. So let's just click on this and test that circuit. Okay, so now we need to add some code to um, put into effect this slowing down effect on Pac-Man. So to do that, we're going to want to add a little bit more code and we're going to want to say if the ghost is touching Pac-Man, then do you remember that speed variable we made for our bonus sprite? Well, unsurprisingly, we're going to set speed to a smaller number now. Let's go to events, when I receive, show dots, uh, if uh, puts in a forever loop, control forever. If I'm touching Pac-Man, then I want to set speed to, uh, let's make him really slow, one. Then I'm going to want to wait 10 seconds and then set the speed back to its original, which was three. Okay, so that's going to slow Pac-Man Pac -Man down temporarily. We do have a problem, however. Um, if Pac-Man is nearby that ghost and this 10 second clock starts, and then Pac-Man touches the ghost again, um, that 10 seconds will restart, which seems a bit harsh and a bit unfair. So we may only want this to happen if the speed has not already been slowed down. Okay, so what we're saying that if the speed's already set to one, don't do this again, it's a bit harsh. Uh, but if it's anything other than one, then yet by all means, slow Pac-Man down. So to do that, we can add uh, an if inside this. So this now sits inside an if. So if touching Pac-Man, um, and then we can do another if in there, or actually for simplicity, well, let's take that out. Let's change this one. If that touching Pac-Man, let's put an and there. So we're gonna put an and in here. So if he's touching Pac-Man and, I'm gonna need a not, and I'm gonna need an equals. This is gonna be a little bit of complex Boolean algebra for you, but don't worry. Um, we're gonna say speed and one. Okay, so this is saying, look, if um, if the slowdown ghost is touching Pac-Man and it's not the case that the speed is set, that speed is currently set to one, then set speed to one, wait 10 seconds and set speed back to three again. So if the speed is three or six, because perhaps he's been touching his bonus sprite, um, then it will be true that the speed is not one, in which case this will work if touching Pac-Man and the speed is not one. But if the speed is one, because he's already touched the ghost and we're in that 10 second little break, then um, this we don't want this to trigger again. Okay, so that puts a little safeguard in there for us. So let's give this a test. Let's just run our game and see what happens. So I'm gonna try and interact with that ghost. I'm gonna go down and hit it deliberately and see if I slow down. So it's actually quite hard to get it. And oh, I hit him and I'm now definitely going quite a lot slower. Okay, so that seems to be working pretty well. Now it'd be quite nice if there was some sort of indicator on the screen to tell us that we were now in some sort of slow-mo. So I'm gonna create a little sprite just to appear up here to say slow-mo so that the user knows that's what's happening. So let's um, create a new sprite and let's get some text and let's choose a color to fill that text and you can choose whatever font you want for this. Click in there and just say slow mo and maybe stick that in the center and let's even make uh, perhaps two costumes for that, one where it's a different color so it can alternate between like yellow and red so it will flash uh, and then let's just add some code for this uh, let's see we would want this to appear when that slow motion message has been sent so let's go to, to events and let's say when i receive new message and let's do show slow-mo or we can even do slow-mo activated something like that activated and let's say at that point we want to uh, show and we want to start a loop uh, so it's gonna be a forever loop with a wait in it, maybe half a second wait, and we want it to show the next costume. So it's going to go between the yellow and red, yellow and red flashing. And then we maybe want to have another uh, event, which is to when I receive new message, and this is gonna be hide or slow-mo deactivated perhaps. And at this point, we just want to hide again. So now we need to change our slow-mo sprite to make that appear. Ah, 
We also want that not showing when the game begins. So let's just do events, green flag, hide as well. Okay. Right, so uh, when the ghost initially touches um, Pac-Man, we want to broadcast slow-mo activated. And when uh, after 10 seconds, we're going to deactivate that. So slow-mo deactivated, which should hide that message again. Let's see what happens now. So here I am, I'm not touching the ghost yet, so I'm moving at normal speed. And then I touch the ghost and slow-mo is activated. And after 10 seconds, I should go back to normal speed and that sign should disappear. Excellent, and that's worked exactly as I wanted it to. So that's all you need to do in order to add a ghost that causes Pac-Man to slow down. Hopefully you'll be able to do similarly and add that to your game. In our next video, we're going to add some more ghosts. We're gonna add a ghost that is a revealer ghost and a revealer ghost reveals the killer ghost. And when we hit the killer ghost, it will be game over. And that will be pretty much everything you need to add to your Pac-Man games. So come back for that last video in this series.